Hi everyone, and welcome to the 12th episode of the Matchbox Restoration series. In this episode I'll be restoring the 27D Mercedes 230 SL. The 27D model was introduced in 1966, replacing the Cadillac 60 Special. It usually came in the off-white, almost light cream color. This particular model came without a window unit, as you might see a lot with this model. As it's convertible, it has no roof, so the window unit was very likely to break off while playing with it. The paint of the body has seen better days and the silver plated base on the front grille needs some care. All in all, a great model to restore. So let's get started. I put the model in my vise to remove the two rivets that hold the base onto the body. I use a 4mm drill bit for this. After releasing the model from the vise, the base comes off easily. I then remove the red interior and doors, which seems to be in good condition apart from the tow hook. Although the window unit is missing, it seems that it just broke off as there is still a part of it attached onto the body. I remove the rivet that holds the part in place so I can remove it with a flat screwdriver. After that I can remove the wheels from the axles by grinding away the small lip that holds the wheels in place. Always be careful not to damage the wheels while doing this. I'm not being lazy, but unfortunately this is all the footage I have of cleaning up the base with a soft metal brush. It does take longer than this to make it nice and shiny again though. I prepared the rivet posts for later assembly by drilling a 1.5mm hole in them. I carefully monitor the depth of the hole by putting some tape on the drill bit. With small details like this, I prefer to have a view onto the piece I'm working on instead of looking up to check the ruler on the drill press. I do the same for the rivet on the rear of the body. When the holes are drilled, I can tap a 2mm thread into the rivet posts. This is where I will fit M2 countersunk screws to put the model back together. Always tap small parts at a time and remove any leftover material from the tap to make sure it can properly do its job. You can always use some oil to smoothen out the process. It's time to mix some paint. I'll be using the white X2 Tamiya acrylic paint as a base for the off-white color the Mercedes has. This is a strange color to mix, so after getting some advice from my girlfriend, who happens to be an amazing painter, I decided to mix it with the ochre color of the horse box I restored in episode 7. And yes, the color comes out great. I decide to make the color a bit lighter than the original one, which might have gotten darker through the years. When the paint is mixed, it's time to remove the original paint with some paint stripper. I apply the paint stripper in thick layers with a brush. The doors get the same treatment. After 15 minutes the paint stripper has softened the paint so I can start brushing it off with a brass brush. I'm trying to do this without a tray of water this time. It works out great and I can remove the excess material with a piece of kitchen paper. Before putting a base coat onto the body, I use a soft metal brush to get the casting in better shape again. By doing this, I bring back the shine of the casting and it gives me a nice clean base to apply the base coat on. I'm always surprised how much detail comes back to life after doing this part of the restoration. It's time to put on the base coat. I'm using the light grey Tamiya surface primer this time. The only reason being that my local hobby shop didn't have the white one in stock. You see the two empty cans of white surface primer in the corner of my paint boot. 
I must say that the light grey primer works as good as the white one, so I'll be using it until it's empty. I'm also using my helping hand tool for the first time here. One of my subscribers suggested putting masking tape on some parts of the helping hand to avoid having to clean the entire tool after each paint job. So that's what I will do next time for sure. Thanks for the advice. When the base coat has dried, I can start painting the body and doors. With the light grey primer, it seems that the color doesn't get through at first, but after a couple of coats, the off-white cream color comes through. I'm still struggling a bit on how to use the helping hand properly, but time will tell. After the doors have their first couple of layers, I start painting the body of the model. After multiple layers, I get a nice and even color finish. While the paint is drying, I can clean the interior by putting it in some hot soapy water. After a few minutes, I brush off the dirty parts with a toothbrush. The interior has one part that needs to be fixed. The tow hook has been seen better times, so I decide to replace it with a new one. This particular replacement part comes from model supplies from the UK. It does need some cutting and gluing before it can be put back on the car. I'll be using a new type of glue for this. It's called glue and glaze and it works without leaving marks on the plastic or metal, unlike other glues do. It also has the property of drying transparent. A lot of train modelers use this glue to create small window units in their models even. It was suggested by one of my subscribers. Thanks again for this great advice. While the fixed part of the interior is drying, I'm going to try something that I haven't tested before. A tire wash. You probably have seen other restorers applying a very light coat of gloss black to their tires to make them look like new again. After seeing the results of amazing restorations like the ones of Time Rider, a restorer that I share my projects with during the week, I decided to give this a try myself. You should definitely check out his channel, I have put a link to it in the top right corner of this video. The broken window unit gets replaced by a new one. This one also came from model supplies in the UK. I use the same glue and glaze that I have used before in this restoration to put the window unit in place. After that, I use my custom made tool to shorten the M2 countersunk screws I'll be using to put everything back together again. I simply grind away the protruding part of the screw with my Dremel tool. What's left is a screw that is a perfect fit for the rivet posts I prepared earlier. The wheels and axles go back on the base. I use my custom made axle tool together with my drill press for this. When all parts are done, it's time to put everything back together. I start by putting the doors in place. Then the interior goes in, which secures the doors so they don't fall out. The last part is the base, that gets secured onto the body with the M2 countersunk screws. And that's it! The Mercedes 230SL started off with a worn tow hook, chipped paint and a broken window unit. 
After replacing the tow hook, repainting the body and adding a new window unit, it looks like new again. It only needs some sunny days to make full use of that convertible. I'm quite happy with how it turned out. Please let me know what you think and hit the subscribe button to get notified when I'm uploading a new video. Also keep your eye out on the community tab of my channel where I'll let you know what I'm working on. If you'd like to have some more exclusive insights and previews of my next restorations, please join me on my Patreon page. And as always, thank you for watching.